and basically when you show them, it's this, it's this motion. So it's the pound or smash. And uh, one of our most traditional dishes is um, samaku, and that's what most people know as papaya salad. Okay. This is really, really nice. Folks, I can't say enough, this is my first experience with actual, traditional, authentic Laotian cuisine. And uh, here we are at Thumb in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. This is remarkably good, very tasty. Hi, this is Bob Weiss. I'm the host of Shaking Your World. Cheers. Welcome to another episode of Shaking Your World. We are here today at the Crossroads Collective in Milwaukee, Wisconsin with Darlene, the owner and chef of Thumb. Mm. Thumb is this incredible little Laotian pop-up restaurant and this is one of the dishes that she just made for us. Extraordinary cuisine, fresh, wholesome, thanks to the farmer's market. It's really the epitome of what you want for summertime. Darlene, thank you for taking the time out to talk to us. Oh, thank you for talking to us. We really appreciate uh, Milwaukee and the reception that we've been getting during this crazy time. These are crazy times, but I think it's food stuffs like this that really will make the difference of people because as everything is so off balance, people are looking for some continuity and something in their life that gives them a reason to go. And to come and experience something like this, which is outside the normal parameters of Milwaukee, I think is, is priceless. So if you can, tell us just a little bit about your background. How did you get here? Why now? Um, well, I'm from Rockford, Illinois. Um, I've been cooking since 2012. This is actually my third time living in Milwaukee. Uh, the first time was in 2008, uh, and then in 2012, and then we've been here for about three years since. Welcome home. Thank you. Thank you. It is home now. It really starts to feel like it, and especially when you really get incorporated with the community. And Milwaukee has a great community, a great food scene, uh, wonderful chefs in this area, honestly. We really have gotten to know a lot of the food community and there's just so much outreach between the farmers, the chefs, and mm -hmm. honestly the community as well. So Milwaukee is a great city and a great food town. Cool. So, um, Thumb, tell us about the name Thumb. Thumb, uh, Thumb is the technique that's used to make papaya salad and a lot of other salads and as well as uh, our sauces which we call jails. It's uh, the motion or the technique that's used when you put a mortal and pestle together and you smash all the ingredients together. Um, with that, you can make several varieties of dishes. In Lao, there's a little phrase that we say called thumb everything, where you pretty much can put anything in a mortar and pestle, put in some sauces, and really make it taste delicious. Because it's really about a lot of the ingredients being wonderful and really being able to build flavors with that mortar and pestle, uh, extracting everything. Very nice, and it's, it's a, obviously it's a catchy name as well. <laughs> and uh, you know, the mortar and pestle has been around obviously for ever. forever. Yeah, <laughs> every forever. culture seems to have yeah, some sort of it. Any type of salad that we make, a lot of the sauces that we make right in here. And it, the great thing about it is it, it's easy to do. It extracts as much flavor as possible. Mm -hmm. And I've had this thing for uh, over a decade and it's in pretty good shape still. It so. looks remarkable. Um, have you thought about selling those, by the way, as a product extension? Um, if it's something that down the road, you know, people find the need for, certainly. Uh, we've thought about doing some cooking classes and uh, incorporating market baskets into that. And if that is something that we end up doing down the line, I think we would need to incorporate the sock and coke in a market basket like that so people can actually emulate what we're doing at home from maybe like a, a live feed or something like that. Very nice. So I noticed that uh, on your menu, you've got a, a very uh, judicious amount of vegetarian food items, right? We do, and uh, honestly, that wasn't intentional. Okay. It just, uh, our food kind of works well in that setting, but sure. we do have a lot of great meat dishes as well. We uh, do a lot of grilled meats also, okay. but vegetables are definitely a staple part of Lao cuisine. So what about seafood? Seafood. Seafood is huge in Lao cuisine, and right now we uh, currently aren't doing anything seafood-based. However, the majority of our dishes do contain some seafood because fish sauce and oyster sauce, and in the Lao culture, what's called badak, which is a fermented fish sauce, they're very prominent in the culture. So fish is used as a seasoning agent for a lot of the dishes, a lot of the um, sauces. Some of them can be made without the fish sauce, but that would 
certainly, uh, they would lack in authenticity for right. sure. It's so, similar, I'm sorry. No, no, I didn't ask it. The, uh, the seafood often takes the place of salt. Yes, okay. or even I found like in Italian cooking, oftentimes they use anchovies. Sure. So I would say it's a very similar equivalent to that okay. where you're not tasting a fishy flavor, especially right. when somebody's using it right. right. If you're tasting the fishiness, you're, you're using it incorrectly. It's really there to balance the mm -hmm. flavors. It has some umami and it has some tartness, but along with that salt component as well. So. I tasted some of your tamarind sauce in that, and it was extraordinary. And this Thank is you. a process where you take the pods, and you, you boil them, and you extract mm -hmm. the goo. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the sap, if you will. Uh, but the flavors are just dynamic. And you could, the attention to detail, the conviction that you've got, again, watching you cook and watching you explain things is, is incredible. And people Thank really you. should come down and experience authentically ocean cuisine, and from such a nice person as well. well. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I think in this time right now, that's the safest way that we've thought about being able to do cooking classes, because let's be honest, not everyone wants to come out right now and or come out every day, you know, and being able to try something new at home, especially in the cooking aspect, is pretty cool mm -hmm. too, I think. Absolutely. Well, please, throw away. <laughs> um, I can actually uh, start a little bit of papaya salad for you. I actually have my cup down here. So in the restaurant world, we kind of have to do things a little bit different than the traditional at-home version. So to make things a little bit faster on us, we do pre-make our uh, papaya salad sauce. We thumb it ahead of time, but then we thumb the ingredients into it after the fact. So with our papaya salad, uh, I actually, I got to grab some fresh garlic. I'll be right back. All right, so we've got our garlic. Oops, excuse me. So with the papaya salad, we start with our garlic. And I like garlic a lot, so I'm gonna put in about three cloves. Um, a couple peppers as well. These are Thai bird peppers. These are also from Fondi Farmer's Market that we found over the, this week. Um, we're gonna use a little bit of sweet papaya, but then a, a good base of our regular papaya. And I'm actually just gonna smash the dry ingredients first because I like to really get the papaya and pepper smashed into almost a paste. And in the process, you're gonna kinda get a juice from the papaya itself. Uh -huh. And since we've got a little bit of the uh, sweet papaya in there, the, the riper papaya, uh -huh. it's gonna give us a little bit of sweetness to flavor as well. Sure. And uh, we also use palm sugar as our sweetener. Coconut palm? Uh -huh. Coconut palm, yep. Okay. Which we actually put into a simple syrup just to make our lives a little bit easier. Oh, nice. And so we also use tamarind in our dressing. And that's one, one of the reasons that we can't do this sauce to order. Tamarind comes in, uh, they come in pods mm -hmm. and you have to soak them in water right. and then pretty much aggressively uh, extract, extract, the, <laughs> the, extract the pulp from the yeah. seeds. Very sebaceous. Yes, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, a pretty, uh, it's a pretty sour, tart, aggressive flavor. Yeah. So with that, um, we, we try to do that ahead of time. Otherwise your papaya salad would take about an hour each time. So uh, we call this our thumb sauce. We actually use it to, uh, as a sauce for our papaya fries as well. Huh. It's pretty aggressive, but I'll give you a little taste. It's gonna be production all by itself. You have to extract that all the time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh wow, this is beautiful. So it's got some complex flavors, but it is, uh, it's pretty aggressive, I would say. I like that, a lot. Also in our uh, papaya salad, we use snake beans or long beans, people have referred them to. Okay. And uh, these are also from the farmer's market. Mm -hmm. It's neat sometimes too, when you get them from the market, because they're not 
Uh, they're not grown to be exactly the same. Sometimes you'll get different variations of it. Sure. So we've gotten some purple long beans here too, which is pretty neat and beautiful in color. Got some nice uh, market tomatoes as well. So we're gonna add that and add, that helps to add some acidity. Mm -hmm. And of course it adds to the juiciness of the dish. And when I was little, uh, my cousin and I, we would actually, we, we like to pretend that we were cooking. Like every, you know, little kid when they're growing up, they like to play house. We used to actually go out and pick twigs and berries and grass and we would use rocks and we would pretend that we were making papaya salad. <laughs> and we would sit there on the ground and pretend that we were thumbing. And then we're gonna add, uh, since we've got that tamara dressing, we've got some sugar, um, we're gonna put some lime in there to uh, balance out some of those flavors. So what I'm picking up from this is not just the tamarind, but also garlic and a little chili pepper, and there's a different citrus component as well. Is that more lime that's in here? That's the tamarind. All by itself? All by itself. Nice. There is some fish sauce in there as well, okay. which is a big component to Lao cooking. Uh, we're gonna add some carrots to this dish as well, just mm -hmm. to give it some color, uh, so a little bit of sweetness, some added texture as well. All right. I'm gonna give this a little taste. All right. Oops. Pardon me. All right. So for me, this is, um, I feel like pretty perfect. It's spicy, it's tart. It's got a nice balance of flavors. Mm -hmm. um, so we're gonna go ahead and put it on a plate. And at Crossroads, we're in a little bit simpler of a environment. So sure. we kind of try to plate things a little bit more family style because that's how Lao people eat. Right. So we do like to use the trays um, to incorporate some of the culture into our plating. We use banana leaves. One thing we find with that as well is when we put sticky rice on the banana leaf, you get the aromatics of right. the banana leaf as part of your experience. And right now, one of the beautiful things that we're finding from the market also is this beautiful red cabbage. Mm -hmm. And our papaya salad gets plated right on the cabbage. What a beautiful presentation that is. And pretty, uh, pretty simple. We're not trying to do anything too fancy. We're letting the colors and the flavors speak for themselves. It's gorgeous. Um, Nature's simplicity, it's just beautiful. Yeah. And we do like to serve it with a little bit of cucumber. That kind of helps to break up some of that spiciness sure. in between bites too. And then it is a pretty traditional thing to serve papaya salad with peanuts. Uh, if you put that alongside uh, some sticky rice, you pretty much have the perfect little Lao snack. Absolutely. So if you had uh, any thoughts about the, uh, where you'd, if you had time to get off and to uh, enjoy a meal in Milwaukee, where would you go and what would you eat? Um, well, recently uh, we we had we tried a new place, and it's we've only been able to experience it carry out style because yeah. it was during COVID. Sure. But uh, there's a restaurant called Damascus Gate. Okay. I believe it's Syrian food. Mm -hmm. Really hope I'm not wrong on that. Um, but on Mitchell Street, perhaps. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. And yeah. they actually did a pop up at Amalinda, uh, okay. which is a Spanish restaurant mm -hmm. that I worked at prior. I was the sous chef there. And they did a pop up there and some of the tastings of their food was incredible that uh, once the restaurants started closing down and then reopening for at least carry out and take out, we, we had to take the opportunity to try something new since we were cooped up in the house for a couple months. Mm -hmm. So 
we went out to Damascus Gate and got the most incredible spread. Uh, we got some falafel, some different meats that were um, skewered and charred, mm -hmm. some great pita bread. It was just wonderful. And one thing that I enjoy about Milwaukee is that it has a lot of great um, small ethnic places and a lot of really authentic ethnic places as well. Uh, one of my husband and I, one of our favorite restaurants, it's actually outside of Milwaukee, it's in West Dallas, but it's called Szechuan. Mm -hmm. Amazing, amazing food. Uh, very authentic. I mean, if you go in, it's the majority of the patrons are Chinese and some of the waitresses don't even speak very good English, which to me is a true sign of it being an authentic restaurant in a lot of cases. I agree as well. Does your husband cook? Uh, he didn't before we started this business. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, the business uh, being a very crazy time that we started sure. it during, um, we started with just the two of us and my husband has zero cooking background. So um, when we started, we started out for only delivery and carry out. So he was, he was my sous chef. Yeah. So it just started out with the two of us. We have some friends and family helping us now sure. that we've opened up partially for dine-in with our distance dining and our patio. Uh, but he's getting a lot better. It's, it's funny, he's uh, the sticky rice cooker. And growing up, that was my job at the house. You know, I'd come home and make rice. And now he doesn't even let me touch the sticky rice because he doesn't. He says I do it wrong. <laughs> like, how can I do it wrong when I taught you how to do it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's great to see um, him having pride and you know something that I've been able to share with him culturally. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Well, I'd like to share something with you. We have uh, daily menus at Shakers, weekly menus, and the monthly theme dinners. Neat. Uh, the next theme dinner coming up is uh, is northern Spain, is Basque region. Uh, so very San neat. Sebastian, Santander, Bilbao, a bit of Barcelona. Uh, if you and your husband are so inclined to be my guest for that next week Friday, I'd be honored to have you. It's on our rooftop. Oh, wow. That sounds a wonderful. Well, right now we, we're working 100% of the yep, time, so it. we really don't have time, but maybe in the future. Uh, I mean, any time is, is good for No, us. that sounds wonderful, and we love the opportunity to try anything different. And I love specialty dinners like that because it's, it's also a lot of chefs, their opportunity to do something outside of what they do every single day. Mm -hmm. You know, um, even though I'm cooking the food of my culture and I, I love it, sometimes, you know, cooking the same menu every single day gets a little monotonous. So doing a wine dinner here and there or doing a pop-up at a different restaurant and being able to infuse um, other dishes with some of your flavors is a neat process too. So of course. I, I, love, I love seeing those specialty dinners for that reason. <clears throat> well, ma'am, let's... Uh, All right stab at this and see we're coming up with flavors. What should I anticipate here? Um, you should ex certainly get some spiciness, some tartness, but you, you'll get that balance. Hopefully it's not too spicy, but I, I feel like we do kind of tone it down slightly for the American palate, mm -hmm. but um, I think a lot, of, a lot of the adventurous people are coming out and actually trying the, to kick it up a notch. We've actually seen several people that have come back and asked for it a little bit spicier. This is wonderful. Balance is extraordinary. Thank you. And it continues on, not in a bad way, but the flavors are just. The, mm -hmm. you, you tense the different tiers of everything you've got you have going layers. on there. And we try to. Uh, one thing too is incorporate the different textures. If you notice, we shave our papaya, we shred our papaya, and then we do our. Uh, a technique where you beat the papaya with the mallet and then you shave it. And in, in the Lao culture, it's actually called fucking. P-H-U-C-K is how we've been spelling it. But those three different techniques of getting the papaya into different strands and different shapes kind of give you different crunch textures or crunch values as well. Well, the umami is extraordinary. Thank you. So this is delightful. Thank you. Something great and light and refreshing for a hot day like today, too. Absolutely. Um, closing thoughts? Um, thank you for your time. And, you know, thank you for allowing us to share some of my culture, something uh, that, you know, is really near and dear to my heart. And, you know, my grandmother was a big part of why I got into food. I got into a little bit late in life. I was 28 when I started cooking professionally. I went to school, culinary school at 28, really delved in at over 30 um, and it's really great to be able to share something that is close to my heart when it comes to what I do professionally but also 
what's near and dear to my heart when it comes to family and what I've learned from my grandmother. She is now passed, so being able to carry on that legacy is something that, you know, you not everyone gets the opportunity to do, so I just feel very fortunate to be able to share our story. Darlene, thank you again. I appreciate the time. I know what it's like to be before <laughs> a, a lunch push and to be distracted like this. Um, again, delightful. Thank you Thumb, so much. Crosswords Collective, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Darlene, please do come down and see her. Thank you so much. Thanks for coming into our house. We love you, Milwaukee. Well, here we are. Um, this absolutely smells delightful, looks delightful. Um, these lop dishes here are gonna be dynamic. I, I'm, I'm gonna start with an egg roll. I don't know why, but uh, typically I'd stay away from those things because I generally have a tendency to avoid things that are, are fried in that capacity. But I'm gonna start right there. Actually, maybe I'll start with the papaya fries because these look and smell just marvelous. Oh, this is worth the price of admission all by itself. Wow. You must have these. It's like the best shoestring potato fries you've had elevated up. They're, they're sweet. The frying is just really delicate on the exterior. Just wonderful, 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 wonderful. Mm. My God, these are hot. Um, temperature wise. Fantastic flavors, as opposed to a, uh, a spring roll or even a traditional Chinese, if there is such a thing, egg roll. Um, much more uniformity on the inside. This just looks, not like a forced meat, but this is great. Wonderful flavors as well. Delightful. Little grilled beef. Wow. Incredible texture. I could have cut that with a spoon, but there's no need to cut it at all. Um, sweet for beef. Delightful. And yet there's a flavor there that really Many times in, uh, in Asian cuisine, I've experienced a steak that is done with a soya, mushroom soya, something like that. This is not that, but it's got a little flavor profile beyond just the sweetness. That is really special. Chicken now. Cilantro on the perimeter. It's almost a bit of a East Indian kind of flavor here on this chicken, grilled chicken. This is great. Never would have expected this. Don't know why, but never expected quite these flavors here. Same flavor in the grilled zucchini. Whatever Darlene is using is exceptional there. Wonderful. Again, in America, this is often called larb indirectly. It should be lop. Uh, but I suppose between this and the sticky rice, these are the natural dishes of Laos. With the charred meat flavor, this is extraordinary. The lime juice, so tender. My. This is. Really, really nice. Folks, I can't say enough. This is my first experience with actual, traditional, authentic Laotian cuisine. And uh, here we are at Thumb in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. This is remarkably good. Very tasty.
We're going to set something up to uh, get Darlene and her husband to come in and to cook at Shakers for something. I'm, um, I'm really hepped up on this, and if we can help promote, cost promote their product with a uh, theme dinner by us, that's exactly what we're going to do.